All right, so you are going to start with a large sheet of neutral colored paper, and we want to fold this. So now it kind of looks like a book. And you want to take a pencil, and you're going to draw just half of the African style mask that you created. So you can use the images that we've looked at. Um, I'm looking at images off my iPad. I will put images up on the smart board. And you want to find the shape of a mask that you like, that you would like to recreate. Um, so you want to think about, do you want to keep it sleek and simple or do you want it to be a little crazy? I'm going to keep mine fairly simple and I'm going to make the kind that kind of has the big top and then it comes real skinny there at the bottom. So what I want you guys to notice, I know it's hard to see on this dark paper, but I started way at the top and I went all the way to the bottom. I did not create just an itsy bitsy tiny mask like that. Now this is only half of my mask. We're going to cut on a fold to create the full mask. So make sure you come out at least a decent amount so you don't have a really, really narrow mask. And you want to cut this out. So here's my fold. I don't open it up. I cut while it is folded. And this creates symmetry, the same on both sides. Right, and I'm going to actually keep my scraps because I can probably reuse them. And then you want to open your mask up. And now you have the same on both sides, okay? And I think I need to make mine just a little narrower here. Okay, now I'm happy. All right, so from here, you want to create the features of the face on the mask. So again, you can look at all the images that I've shown you. And in this baggie, I have stencils. Do you have to use these? Absolutely not. These are just here to help you if you feel you need a little help. So African masks have a lot of um, different kind of looking facial features. So I made just a few stencils in that style. And you want to pick out a new color. Um, and let's probably start with the nose first. So I want my nose to be this sort of light tan color. And in this little thing it says nose. And I'm going to go through it and I'm going to pick out what nose I like the best. And all I'm going to do is trace it. And again, you do not have to use a stencil. If you just want to free draw it onto this paper, you can. But if you're free drawing, you have to make sure it's a good size. Not too big, not too small, that it'll fit on the mask you're creating. Okay, and once I'm done with my nose stencil, I'm going to put it right back so I don't lose any of them. I'm just keeping all my scraps because I'm not sure if I need to use them or not. So I'm just going to set this to the side and now I'm going to find the lips that I like. And decide what color you want the lips. Mm. Let's see here. Yeah. I think I'll do this brown for the lips. And you know what, this paper is too big, so I'm just going to cut it. And then maybe somebody else can use this piece later. I just really need this much. Now I'm going to do the same thing for eyes. So pick out the stencil you want for your eyes. Or free draw it. For the eyes, what I've done is I've traced it onto one little piece of paper and I actually cut another one of the same size to go underneath it. And then I will cut at the same time so I don't have to do this twice. And this way I get two eyes just by cutting once. Voila. And that way they're the same size. Okay. So now... I could glue this down like this, 
but this is a little too plain for me. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take some brown paper and I'm going to glue my eyes onto this paper. Or at least one eye. I'm going to glue one eye onto this paper. And I'm just using dots, not lots. And then what I'm going to do, now this is where it gets a little tricky, now I'm going to free draw around this eye. And I'm just following the same shape of the eye drawing lightly and then I'm going to get another sheet of paper same color and I'm going to put it underneath and I'm going to cut it out alright now I can still see some of my pencil marks so I'm just going to take an eraser and erase those so it looks nice and clean Alright, so I'll just take this eye and glue it onto this shape. And then they will be symmetrical. They will be the same. So now my eyes just have a little more flair to them. They aren't as boring to look at. I have a little more oomph to it. Okay, and you could do the same thing with the nose. You could do the same thing with the mouth. Okay, once I've made all my features and I want to glue them down and kind of start, you know, being aware of your space. If there's anything super tiny, go ahead and recycle it. But anything big, you might be able to reuse. So now comes the part where you can add a little bit um, of creativity to your piece and you don't really have to use stencils. So if you want to add designs anywhere. You can do this with paper. So maybe you want to add something up on top. Maybe you don't. It's up to you. So a lot of this is just problem solving, kind of figuring out how you want to do this. Is the paper big enough? Do you need new paper? What do you need right now? going to do, I want to put something on his forehead, so I am taking my mask and I'm tracing the forehead just so I have the right size. And then I'm going to draw and all I'm going to cut out is that little part. And if it hangs off the edge a little bit, you can always cut it. So now you can go through your scraps. And you can start making little shapes, little designs to put on your mask. They shouldn't take over your mask because you really want it to still look like a face. They should just add a little bit of flair to your mask. So I'm going to add these little stripes on the cheeks. Okay, so here is my mask. I think I'm done with the all the cutting and gluing of the paper, the collage portion of it. So you want to take all your little scraps and recycle them and really manage your space well. Um, any pieces like this that you've cut out, if you could, just kind of cut them into tiny shapes. And we'll keep the scrap paper because it, we know we worked very small on this assignment. So we just need little bits of paper. Um, for future classes when they want to do this assignment. They just need little bits. We don't need big sheets of paper. So we'll keep this and reuse it um, when another class does this assignment.
Alright, so now I'm adding this to the bottom of my mask. You can choose to add it to the top or to the sides or not at all. So what I've done is I've taken a hole punch and I have punched a hole right here. I'm going to take some raffia and you don't want it too long but you don't want it too short. So you need to find the center of this. So the way I do it is I just line up my edges, make sure they're even, boom. Then I go through here. Here's my center. And then I'm going to keep it as a loop. And I'm going to squeeze that loop a little bit. And I'm going to go underneath the mask. And I'm going to pull that loop through. Then I'm going to open this loop up. And I'm going to take this stuff that's hanging. And I'm going to push it through the loop. And then I just pull very, very gently. If you pull too hard, you can tear the paper. And that's how you can create raffia. So you can do it one strand at a time. If you've got a good handle on it, you can do more strands at a time. So get your loop. The loop goes through the hole. And then you take your other edges. And you have to go back up and through the loop and pull them tight but not too tight that you break the paper. Okay, and they should be able to just hang and you can trim them if you need to trim them or just leave them long if you like them long. Okay, the next step you're going to get a sheet of paper and you want it to be a different color than your mask. So my mask is a gray, like the main part, so I'm picking a black. Please put your name on the back and your code. Flip it over. And then get your mask. Flip it over. And you want to put a frame of glue on your mask. And then I like to put an X in the middle of mine. You want to lay your mask in the center of the paper, not too high, not too low. Same on either side. Okay, now I want to add just a little bit more to my design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very lightly with a pencil draw some marks that I want to make. And I'm kind of just making some wavy lines. These can be symmetrical or not. And you can probably barely see them on the screen because I'm drawing so light. Alright, now what I'm going to do here you have two choices here. You can either get some paint and a Q-tip. Dip your Q-tip in the paint and paint on top of your lines. Or you can play with a new material. And I got a bunch of beans. And you can put dot down and use beans. Okay, so you can choose to leave them like this, kind of spread out, or you can take your glue and draw with your glue and put them close together. Here is my African mask all complete now. I did use a Q-tip with white paint um, to add this white outline next to the beans that I glued on. Um, you will notice if you do use beans, it's going to be a little heavy, so you're going to have to use two hands when you carry it. Um, but this is mine all complete.